CD podcast. Um, we have just been having so many great conversations on this show that I am so excited to bring you somebody who is not a hairdresser, but she is in the industry and knows a lot about us. Her name is Katie. Right now she works for L'Oreal and we have a history of like knowing each other through other people and social media and whatnot. And we bumped into each other a few months ago at a live event. I think it was like the last live event we were allowed to be at where um, well, there was like a cutting demo going up on stage. And so we got to connect and talk about business and life a little bit. And we were recently reconnected with you reaching out, which I love people taking initiative to just have a conversation about what is going on right now how you're dealing with things, your perspective on that. And really, she called to see how I was doing, basically is what it felt like. You were calling to check in with me and to see if there was anything that you could do to hold space for me, which I felt very honored to get that call from you. I think people realize don't realize how much a phone call can mean and how much that made my whole day. So thank you for reaching out and I'm glad we're sitting down here now to talk about this. Um, we're like almost six feet apart so we're doing our part to <laughs> quarantine right now but we're neither of us are working and this really isn't a job because i'm not getting fucking paid yet so here we are having fun and having a conversation so will you tell everybody like who you are and what you do in the industry yes so my name is katie king and i work for l'oreal professional um the professional products division of l'oreal i should say um, i'm a multi-branded portfolio um, but i've been in the beauty industry for about eight years Prior to L'Oreal, where I met Jessica, was when I was working with Unite, another local company based out of San Diego. Um, and prior to that, I worked for a makeup and skincare company called Color Science. Cool. Um, so that's really where I got my start in the beauty industry and where I found my passion for what I do. Um, a lot of those products have SPF infused into them, which is a big part of my daily life. Okay. Um, but I'm just to a total beauty junkie. Yay. Like, I love all of it. Skincare, makeup, hair care. So I definitely feel like I found um, a career path in beauty, and I, I never expected that. I so love that. I just feel so blessed to be able to do something that I love um, and help support people. So that's the bottom line, I feel like, across all companies and all brands, is that it really comes back to that human connection mm. and supporting people, which is something that drives me every single day. Um, and reaching out to people is... is uh, you know, it's about building that connection, so. Well, but that's like a foreign language to people these days. Like, y people don't really do that anymore. I know. Like, I was talking earlier to uh, to the last person that I interviewed about when I grew in the industry 20 years ago, there, there was no social, you couldn't send somebody a DM. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. guerrilla marketing. If you wanted to meet them, you had to go show up at the salon, introduce yourself, ask if you could have like a, a work day where you could shadow them or do something. That was the only way you got contact with them. Or there were brands like, you know, with Juju, you'd go in and you'd get to introduce yourself. But even then, I'm sure they got a lot of pushback back then, just walking in cold, like cold conversation with people. But I tell you, between then and now, it's so normal to get a phone call and, and or to get a DM um, as opposed to a phone call. So when we set up the time to hop on a call, uh, I've been trying to really make space for that in, in my day because I feel like those those moments where I give myself 20, 30, 40 minutes, I think we talked for like an hour, like you can really, like you get a lot from them. So being open to giving your time to have conversations that you think maybe you don't know what you'll get out of it or where it's going to go. And especially with quarantine right now, have you been having those conversations with other stylists and salon owners? Yeah, I mean a lot. Social, we rely so heavily upon social media now. Um, like you mentioned, the DMs. I slide into people's DMs <laughs> all the time. It's a jam. But it's hard because when you look at my Instagram, my professional Instagram, like there's not really much of a personal con personal connection there. And my most recent post was just like a selfie of myself and trying to explain a little bit about like what I do and who I am because a lot of times I feel like I just get associated with the brand that I'm working for sure. and I lose that that ability to have that personal connection so not as many people are open to jumping on calls with me but when we did jump on a call I feel like we were able to be like oh my gosh hey like yes here's my voice like even now like facetiming or zoom calls all of those things that we're doing now to try to remain connected and remain you know relevant in the industry um you just really kind of have to pivot in that way and that's just the way of the world now so even being here and being able to be face to face with you this is like a one-off circumstance <laughs> right. it's not happening right now yeah. and like you were saying the guerrilla marketing and cold calling like that is what I'm used to I'm used to being able to walk into a beautiful space like this one and show my face and say hello and greet people and give my energy and 
you know, sample them some cool new product or make that physical in-person connection. And right now with COVID and everything that's going on, I think all brands and all businesses are struggling to find their way back to that in yeah. this new virtual digital world that we're living in. So. Yes. And that hits home so hard because as a stylist, with the one-on-one -on -one connection with the client is everything. Everything. Like, we, we don't do hair virtually. It's never even an option. Yeah. So I think when this first shutdown happened, everybody happily abided by the rule um, as best that they could. But I think a lot of people, I was saying for myself, it gave me time and space to start working on other things I had put off for a really long time. But I think for the mass majority of, of stylists or anybody in the industry, they were happy doing what they were doing and showing up and creating every day. They weren't looking for another mm -hmm. avenue or job. Mm -hmm. So to now be responsible for making at home color kits or teaching people how direct to ship to order product or any of that kind of stuff is like so foreign and so out of like what they were even wanting to do. A lot of people fell into that like, what was me? Oh fuck, like what do I do mm -hmm. now kind mm -hmm. of mentality. Mm -hmm. um, how did you, I, you explain how you got into what you're doing, but how would you say, like, I know people are interested in doing what you do as maybe a, a way to stay in the industry, but not have to work their body so hard behind the chair, but they still want that interpersonal relationship with salons and that whole personal service client thing. Totally. Yeah. I feel like that is a common thread and I have personal friends in the industry as well that are behind the chair. Mm -hmm. And I think COVID has given everyone an opportunity to just like kind of reevaluate where we are in life and what we what our goals and aspirations are and if all of a sudden everything that we're used to and what we're doing every day is stripped away from us like what do we have left and where do we go from here right. and thinking more bigger picture and long term but I think this is the advice I've been given throughout my career and that I've stuck to is just it's really about who you know and mm -hmm. going back to the human connection piece is that every single position that has led me to where I am today has been through a personal connection that I've made with a coworker or a manager or having those people in your corner. Um, and you just always want to just be putting that energy out there, you know, like yes. here I am, like I'm, that's why I'm here today. Like I just still trying to just put my energy out there and just be present and be, um, you know, open to whatever opportunities there may be out there. So I think just setting yourself apart in that way, because not everyone does that, is no. really what's going to lead you down that that path into where you want to be next. Totally. And you might not know where that is, but just being yeah. open to it and putting yourself out there consistently. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I see often people say, oh, I've tried that, or oh, that didn't work for me, or you know, I'm not comfortable doing that. I think there's a level of discomfort you have to get to and be okay with in order to start being consistent, even if you don't know where it's going to lead. Mm -hmm. So like you didn't know you'd end up like being asked to be a guest on the show now, yeah, you know, but yeah. by you calling me, me seeing your interest in uh, my well-being and my, the likes of other hairdressers and salon owners, I was like, yeah, yes, she's not a, a stylist, but she could bring some perspective to us and kind of share just like the workings of all of that. So totally. as much as I want to talk about hair stuff, I want to talk about you as a person, like <laughs> where are you from? Where did you grow up? And I, I know that how you got into the industry now, but like, what are your goals and where do you see yourself going with the industry? Because, well, while we're recording, I cannot sell retail from my salon right now. I can, if a client asks for me, I can go pick it up and I can either deliver it or ship it to her. But now everything has gone direct to ship. So do you see, where do you see yourself going in the industry? Do you, do you have a clear path? Or are you just willing to put yourself out there and see whatever opportunity kind of pops your way? Um, I am. I, I would love to stay with L'Oreal. I love this company so much. Like, I can't speak highly enough about just the care that they've given all of their employees throughout this time, too. That's you know, huge. it's just such an uncertain time, and we've all remained employed and supported and just in so many different ways. So I feel like getting a job with L'Oreal has, I mean, you always think, I always think of like a movie where it's like, you're standing in New York City and you're outside of a big building and it's like L'Oreal and yes. you know, I made it and you know my family was so proud when they found out that I got the job with L'Oreal it was just really like a step up for me in my career path and I felt like wow like I've achieved success yes. you know and, what a good and feeling. Um, it, it was great and it and it's not been easy like it's been really this this role has been the most challenging for me but it's grown me so much and I've learned so much in the last year and a half that I've been with the company 
Um, that being said, I would love to have a long-term career with L'Oreal. I would love to stay in, with the company. There's so many opportunities as far as the different brands that they own. I mean, I work, I mentioned I work under the professional products division, so I support salons and stylists directly with the products that they use every day. Cool. But, I mean, L'Oreal owns a plethora of makeup yeah, lines. so many things. Care, all different things. So, I mean, there's just so much opportunity, and I could definitely see myself staying in this industry. Um, but pivoting a little bit, because I know we talked about on our call just about the emotional side of things and supporting the stylist in different yes. ways with just a real like person-to-person -person type of support that doesn't necessarily involve business or numbers, but really just kind of helping them cope with the circumstances that we're in and things that we're going through. And I've always been that way. So I feel like I could see myself leaning in more to like that side of it in education maybe yes. or creating maybe like a different program to offer or something different that really relates and um, resonates with the stylists today you know just the way things are changing because I think one thing that we can all agree upon no matter what brand you work for or what company you represent is that things are changing and they're changing at a very rapid pace yes. so we're all kind of either frozen, frozen I don't know what to do. What are we going to do? Yeah. Or we're trying to think outside of the box and be creative and take steps, take steps forward in the right direction. So that's really what I feel like I'm just at the beginning of my career. I'm like, no way. Almost like a hit restart. Yeah. Like, I'm like, no way is this going to like, we can't let this set us back. And no matter where I go from here, whether I stay with L'Oreal, which I pray I do, um, I know I'm always going to have that go-getter mentality and that's just who I am. Yep. So I'm going to keep on that, keep on keeping on that path. And that's, I think, where I'll find, because no matter what the outcome, if you know you put your best effort into mm -hmm. it, you're always going to feel pride in the result. And I love that. And that's just how I feel about it. And that's why you will be successful, because with that mentality, like, doesn't matter what, where someone places you in the company, like, yeah. you will make the most and be the most successful in that position. Yeah. So we started to have a conversation. She came up with some like she just said good ideas of bringing education to the salon that maybe doesn't really exist yet at least uh, as attainable as say a product knowledge class or a cutting class from someone who's you know works with L'Oreal um, we came up with some concept ideas of creating a program like she said to support stylists versus the more client experience so that was something that really hit home for me what you said and got me excited because it's work I'm trying to do and I'm only one person right now. So to think I could possibly work with you guys to brainstorm and L'Oreal, just like some kind of concept program yeah. we could put together to support salons, to support salon owners, um, really got me excited. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited to start that conversation with you. And if you're listening to this and that sounds like something you guys could benefit from, like message us, DM me, DM Katie about any ideas and things that you see lacking that we could fill that spot with. Because as far as like, holding space for you guys, holding space for the stylist, because at the end of the day, like the client experience is so important, but it's got to come from a true authentic place. You have to be genuinely happy with what you have going on and at the core, you know, refill your cup before you can continuously pour out to other people. Because like you said too, we were talking about how many people we see suffering from burnout or who just give up when shit gets complicated like this. And yes, this pandemic has been a lot more of a, you know, bitch slap than anything else that might've come across your career in the last several years, but there are ways to cope with it and deal with it and to hold space for people that I think we can kind of come up with something. So I'm super excited to figure out something. I don't know Me what too. we're going to do, but we're going to figure out something. Yeah. Cause I feel like we are so much aligned in that way. It's yeah. like we do think outside of the box and I constantly hear that from people within my company as well that I respect and look up to that's like we really need to get creative think differently like you know what can we do to pivot how can we help like yeah what's really relevant and what matters um, and how people can really connect and see like L'Oreal is more than just a beauty brand we're more than just a company like we have people that are like selected myself included that are here to help and connect and support in ways that we might not fully understand and that's where we need to rely on you guys to help us and how do we best partner together and what can we do to help you know from a very genuine like authentic place of true caring and yeah and wanting to support I mean L'Oreal has been around we're the first 
you know, creators of hair color. Like I've learned so much about the company and just how it was created and the history of it. It's so fascinating. And the industry as a whole to me just fascinates me. You Same. know, it's, it's so cool. You know, the it evolution really is. is crazy, but at the core, like the fundamentals of like the beauty industry, like it's so much has stayed the same as much has changed. It's like yeah. a lot has stayed the same. And the foundation of what we do, that person to person connection is, is my favorite part about it still. Doesn't matter what brand I'm carrying in the salon or what line I'm using or what pair of shears I have. It's always about that ability that we can connect with people like yeah. this because you, it, it's, it's like a recession proof industry when there's not a pandemic uh, but even more so right now we're being shown how important we are in people's lives because people are rioting and picketing for the fact to get a haircut and it, in the conversation about whether shit's essential or non-essential and yeah. I think the well-being of the clients that come in to get their hair done and your job yeah. you can see the ripple effect of it. it's not just about a haircut 100% it's about the majority of a whole and, and, and everybody being able to like thrive in their business and you know it was, it was sad for me to see so many salons put so much effort into the PPE that was required for us mm -hmm. to reopen mm -hmm. and then to be hit with the second shutdown um, was wild and it got people really fired up I think like I said earlier the first one we were all kind of like okay we'll do our time we'll stay home and and we'll we'll do our part but the second round of being closed kind of out of nowhere you know and I have even friends that have made comments well you're what you do is not essential and yeah. I said You've missed the whole point now. Yeah. If we were all reclosed, if, if McDonald's was closed and if Target was closed and everything was closed again, we would understand. Yeah. But for just us to be closed, like, yeah. I mean, we're not gyms. We're not uh, movie theaters. I yeah. feel like you come into salons as, as like, yeah. a client and as someone who's in the... What is your perspective on how well a salon has been taken care of as far as, like, you know, keeping it clean and all of that kind of stuff? Yeah. I mean, I've seen all the protocols being followed you know, dividers between chairs, chairs being spaced apart, the sanitation and barbicide certificates. And I mean, cosmetologists, hairdressers are trained on sanitation protocols for hours when they go to hours, school. Hours, yeah. And it's such a safe and controlled environment. Um, and I think it does, you really start to question because you're wondering, like, I see this, this business is open, this business is open, this business is open, but we're being closed again. Um, it just doesn't make sense. And I think everybody's just left with a big question mark. And this is li our livelihood, right? you know, this is our livelihood. And, you know, we, it's not something that is, should be taken lightly and it needs to be addressed and we need answers, I like agree. clear answers that we can understand and that, that makes sense to us or else there's just going to be continued unrest. And that's what we're seeing, you know, the protests that have happened and things that are happening in the community. And it's like, yeah, I mean, that's what you expect. What it's do like you expect? People need to know what is going on. Like, we need to understand. Yes, and I am, like, queen of being frustrated when things are uncertain. That's the control freak in me. Like, I get that. So I know how everyone's feeling as a collective. And it, the, it's getting heavy, and the unrest is getting crazy. What are some things that you think hairdressers are there some avenues that people are there is there online education that's to access right now through l'oreal i'm sure you guys have a ton of shit that people could tap yes, into that you're maybe not thinking about so much yes all the brands offer their own digital education calendars um l'oreal specifically l'oreal professional has an instagram l'oreal professional edu which okay. you can go on and there's just schedules of weekly and it's actually really cool with the digital education um because they're able to employ some really high level artists, which would be really expensive to bring in salon. Right. Um, but they're now pivoting and doing a lot of digital education. So it's not like you're seeing just basic, like a basic, you know, highlighting class or a Shades EQ level one class. Like there's actually a lot of options out there for advanced education, more unique classes, cool. which I think is cool. I mean, it is virtual obviously, so it's a little bit of a different learning model, but you do have the opportunity to bring people in from other places in the country and avoid all of that expense, you know? Perfect. So That's I would huge. Encourage that. Yeah. And I think a lot of people did tap into that, but there's so many brands that you think just because you carry one specific brand, that's the only place you should get education from. But yeah. you're reminding me even too, that there's access to so like so many other so things many, out there. I didn't yeah. even think about that. And that was something that I had the privilege of getting different speakers for my online brunch that I was doing because in person, it, I could only, you know, ask certain people because they weren't local. And then I got to, to some people in L.A., some people in Arizona. And that kind of opened my eyes to what virtual experiences could be like as opposed to, like, the negative not getting that connecting, connecting portion. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I think now I think people are making more of an effort to stay connected because it's our only choice. Yeah. At first people were really resistant and now I feel like it's more I'm more open to like getting a random message and like yeah. setting up yeah. a call. Before like I wasn't really I'm my like, thing. All right, yeah. Totally. And I, I feel like I've had to really change like my messaging too, where mm. it was like before I was like, Okay, I'm reaching out, like, how are you? Like, what's going on with your clients? How many clients are you seeing? Like we have this new lightener I wanna share with you because I know you do so many balayages, but right. it's like the conversation has completely pivoted into something so much different than that just like how are you like yeah. what's going on like were you able to get a loan how's that going like how are your stylists doing like what's the nature of your how's it how's it going yes. in general and then once you find that out it's like then where do I go from there like what what value do I add because most people will tell you there'll be like one sentence 10 yeah. minutes into the conversation where it's like the one thing they needed that maybe yeah. they didn't even know they needed that you could provide yeah and then we also talked about just holding space for people too is like I feel like that's a lot of what I do lately not only for my customers and my clients but also for people that I work with too it's like mm. we're all living through this yep. it's not it's we're all humans at the end of the day and experiencing something that we've never gone through before so there's a huge part of that that I don't want to miss like yep. I don't want to overlook that part too and also giving myself grace in that knowing that this is not easy for anybody and although I have an expectation for myself of what I want to achieve and what I want my life to look like mm -hmm. sometimes that's not necessarily achievable or doable in your circumstance like you really yeah. have to just give yourself some time to understand you're doing the best that you can and things will change and they'll continue to evolve but just to be really present you know in the moment and give yourself a little grace like I yeah. feel like uh, what you just said probably resonates so hard with so many stylists because I felt that people couldn't give themselves that space people couldn't just like sit back and try to be present it was always and I'm one of them like figuring out the next thing and taking action and all the stuff and when I could sit down and be more present as to what I really needed it actually was a lot less than I thought it was yeah <laughs> like I think we as humans just think more 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 and we need to do this and that and and really if you just come back to what you're doing is building relationship capital with people. Yeah. And I think a lot of people want to skip that step. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to go straight for the ask or they want to go straight for the like, what can you do for me? Or how can that person help me or serve me, right? Mm -hmm. So I think when people, it's like the art of business basically is relationships. Mm -hmm. If you're not good at building relationships and sustaining relationships, you won't have a long career in this industry. Same with behind the chair. Yeah. So for you to be able to take the time, realize what's needed, like, I feel like you're a lot younger than me and for you to already recognize and know that, like I'm super proud of you. I don't even know you that well. And I'm like, that's so key in the longevity of your business because you never know at what given point that one person that you said something or you held space for, like what, what that opportunity will lead to in the future. Mm -hmm. And everything's so instant gratification right now that like I said, people forget to, to do that step. Mm -hmm. And that step is huge. And it, it, it's not just a one-time thing. Like you got to deal with a bunch of people over and over and over, and over again. again. And it takes, it's, not easy no because you get so many no's or so many like doors slammed not like literally slammed in your face but figuratively speaking yeah. you know that's the feeling that you get when you turn around and you walk out and I've had that feeling so many times in what I do where it's just like yeah, but oh I just wish they would give me a chance just to like hear me out for a second <laughs> like I'm not a bad person I'm a good person yeah you want what I um, have trust me I, know, I just want to help like, yes there's so many things to share but you know, you just have to get back up and just keep going and just keep going, and just keep going. And then it's that one time that you're like, oh, yeah, he heard me. He remembered me and he wanted to talk for even five minutes. And you walk out and you feel like oh, it was worth it. Yes, it's been worth it. Like That's all amazing. those like no's, no's, no's. They led up to this. And I've had so many and this industry, especially I feel like is so connected. Mm -hmm. Like we're all so connected and there's so much like overlap and things that I'm like, oh, I remember I talked to her and now she opened a salon yeah. or, you know, I saw them on Instagram and I'm driving by and I'm in my car. I mean, this is pre COVID when I'd just be out yes. canvassing the area, yeah. looking for people to talk to. But yeah, I'd be like, Oh, that's that salon. You know, like I feel like there were so many like things, so many times the universe was like, boop, like, there you go, Kitty. Like I, we see you. We throw your bone. Yeah, we yeah. throw your bone. I know you're out, you're out there and you're trying and you're working so hard. Like, we're going to – and that's also, too, when it comes back to, like, pre professional or personal or relationships in general, like, in life in general, it's just about that consistency. 
you get back what you're putting out 100 percent. Yeah. like no matter what you're doing like if you're not putting out energy and like trying wh- whether you feel like you're making progress or not in that moment it's not it's not instantaneous nope it's something that you have to continually work for even sitting with you today it's like when I used to call you when I was with Unite and just like, hey, Jessica, yeah. do you want a blonde shampoo? Like, look how far I've come since then. Yes. And it's like just about continually like pushing and moving forward, even if it's baby steps. And I think that's what's hard for people like us that are like the go-getter types and we want to see like movement and progress yeah. is that, you know, with COVID, we've really been forced to slow down. And I know people say that all the time. It's like, oh yeah, COVID's just like forced me to slow down. <laughs> and I'm like, just slowing down. But it's true. It's like, we literally ha- don't have the ability to like move. And it's like, for me, I'm always looking forward to like a vacation yeah. or what I'm going to do next. Yes. What's next? Live for next. <laughs> and it's been hard, you know, it takes a toll on your mental health. And I know we're all struggling with that. You know, Absolutely. Everybody is. And that's something I think for me that's like a personal thing passion that is something you know that resonates is just overall mental health and I think that's what comes back to the program that maybe one day we'll be able to release is that we all need that kind of support yeah and I know L'Oreal provides a lot of tools and resources to the the employees of the company um just like meditations and different I love you know, that. different learnings like online learnings and things to really help digest and and understand your emotions and what we're dealing with but if we can somehow translate that into this industry into this world but make it relevant make it interesting for stylists so it's not just like okay yeah well why i I could just go enroll in some self-help or some meditation course alone because i feel like that's very big here in california too like in our especially in like san diego like the whole like wellness Mm -hmm. and meditation and crystals and whatever but if we can somehow take some of that and some of like really what's happening what's relevant in the salon every day type of a thing it sounds like that should be taught from a stylist i'm just saying i know l'oreal um you could hire me (laughs) maybe that's why i created the program was to support this who Who knows? knows who knows and that's that to me shows like even if nothing comes of this like that almost like is the one sentence validation even though that like we literally have done nothing yet together yeah. creating this course i knew it was in me i needed to get out it needed to come up i needed to show support in whatever way i could and it was all these things that it's so cool to hear that that company provides for you but mm-hmm. as an independent stylist we don't have a company providing exactly. that for us it's exactly. a lot so if if we could partner with someone as big as l'oreal to create something like that wow the uh, ripple effect it could have for our industry yeah. would be great yeah so I cool agree. so i don't know if you know the premise behind this podcast and why I started this so my first thought was and so I'll show you how you tie into this you you might have thought it was just by chance so what I wanted to do when I created this was to bring people on that I've watched them grow in their business I've watched them go from wherever they were to where they are now and some level of success has been achieved right so and that is different for everybody but when you called me and I really replayed like our history and how long I've known you and all the things I was like she's a perfect candidate for the podcast (laughs) and then you called me so it was like the universe was like here's your next guest oh and she happens to be free on the day that you (laughs) asked her like that to me is just where hard work consistency meets opportunity absolutely so if you keep putting yourself in situations to allow for the magic to happen which is the phone call that we had I just happen to have the hour you had yeah. time yeah. like that's when shit happens for you is when you keep showing up even when you're not clear on where it's gonna take you so that's why I love doing this kind of stuff so much it's just it just you know yeah it feeds your soul absolutely and I like love that where like hard work meets opportunity I think that's like where that is exactly where the magic happens Yes. Because it's those little opportunities along the way, but it's about just remaining consistent and being invested in your own growth personally and professionally that will when the opportunity comes, you want to be ready. Absolutely. So my question now is because we're in this like flip-flop of sometimes people didn't think they maybe were going to do something else. They're in the industry. They worked behind the chair. They've got probably, I would say, good, I don't even know what the word is, experience. They know what you do, but they don't really know all that you do. I've had some. We've had some of the coolest people be our reps from different companies that yeah. have had such an impact on bringing us great education. You know, really holding space for the owners, making sure they have everything that they need. Like you're almost like a catered service to a salon. So I think that relationship with you guys is so so important. Um, I don't know if you're interested in switching into being a rep of some sort. Where would you say someone should start if they're even 
interested? Like, how would they even maybe dabble in the thought that they could do what you do? Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely welcome to reach out to me. Perfect. <laughs> That's a good start. I would love to sit down and talk to you about how you can get into that. But I would say have an updated LinkedIn. Always be advancing your, your education. I know from a brand perspective, like, I don't have experience behind the chair. But as far as educators go and other, you know, outlets and areas within the brands themselves, they do have a lot of stylists that are employed through the brands okay. and represent brands as educators. So I know that's big. Um, but yeah, just continually advancing and growing in those areas and networking, just putting yourself out there. Like I said in the beginning too, just having connections, making connections with people, finding a mentor, somebody you look up to, yes. you know, I feel like you're great a great mentor to so many people. Thank you. Um, so many ideas and, and experience. You know, so to feed off of that and and get energy and ideas from people that have been there and done that. So. I love that. Okay. So if you're thinking about pivoting and this seems like something you might want to do, hit her up in the DM. She'll ask and answer any questions that you have or direct you to maybe someone else who could help you further along, figure out what it is that maybe you're looking to do. Because I think at this point, I think a lot of stylists are open, more open to opportunities like that would lead them down a different path. And I think, you know, as much of us love to be entrepreneurs, like there comes a lot of weight with being an entrepreneur. I think a lot of people might be more in the mindset of being committed to somebody else's bigger vision, like L'Oreal or that company. Mm -hmm. I think when you can get behind a team and a brand and be one of those members who can kind of support everything. I think you can find your place there too. And you seem to found your place perfectly yeah. with this company. They're lucky to have you for sure. Oh, thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. I'm and lucky I, to have them too. That's a good relationship yes. right there. That's how it should feel. That's how all things like that should feel. Your salon owner and you and whatever company that you work for, if you can master that feeling of where you feel grateful to be there and they feel grateful to have you, because at the end of the day, like you, where you spend most of your time is so important. It's so, so important. So projecting that energy and just like showing up for yourself. So one last tip I love to always give people is like, what are some tools that you use for yourself to create like rituals or routines? Um, are there any things that you do to like support yourself in this? And because you give a lot. So how do you yeah. refill your cup back up? Well, I'm very much into like health and wellness. Um, I eat really whole foods. I exercise daily for the most part, probably five to six times a week. Yes. I got my Peloton bike in quarantine. <gasps> Speaking my language. So I'm that thing's on that a godsend, thing. right? Yeah, I was on it this morning. It just completely changes your mood. Yeah. Like endorphins are real. Uh -huh. I will tell you that. Who's 100%. your favorite instructor? I love Kendall Tool. I love Kendall. I love I Cody too. I can see why you would like yeah. Kendall. Dex and I look like Kendall. Kendall. I'm like maybe yeah. a 20 year old version. You, I'll take it. <laughs> you are Kendall. Um, but no, doing that, um, connecting with my friends and family. I spend a lot of my free time with my family. I have a nephew who's 18 months old and two Aww. nieces that are about to turn three. Are they local? So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So I spend a lot of time with them being an auntie. I love so it. Fun. That's like, literally one of my greatest sources of like joy and finding just like the balance and knowing like what yeah what really matters at the end of the day but yeah I, I exercise eating well spending time with friends you know just staying I'm such a social person like I need that yep. for my mental health 100% um but yeah I love having like my morning routines getting outside I live by the beach so I'm like so lucky I can like walk to the ocean and oh. just meditate or sit. We need to meet for a walk. That yeah. would be fun. Let's yeah. do that. Let's definitely do that. Okay. We'll those brainstorm like my, some more. Those are my things. Awesome. Well, hopefully we'll have some good news to share back if we get to collaborate and do something cool soon. That would be really rad. Too. Thank you so much for your time. Thank so where you. can people find you on social media if they do have questions? What is your Instagram? So my Instagram is Katie, K-A-T-I-E dot King, K-I-N-G, L'Oreal USA. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, guys. And if you have any other questions in, in regards to pivoting or any of that, you guys can always message me, too. And I think Katie's more than happy to answer any questions. We both have different perspectives. So ask away. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.